tremendously funny actor. Now, my next guest is a classically trained musician, a TV presenter, and also a model. It's Mylene Kloss. There she is, the gorgeous and talented <laughs> Mylene. Hello, Mylene. Hi. Doesn't Mylene look gorgeous? <laughs> Mylene is currently starring in the M&S adverts. You may have seen her in a bikini on giant billboards around the country. And if I may say so, you look fantastic. Thank you. I'm taking up a lot of room on the sofa here. I feel a bit bad. We should point out it's because she's pregnant. She doesn't have an enormous ass. <laughs> the lovely Mylene Class is on the show, sitting alongside Nick Foster. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the gorgeous Mylene Class. <laughs> Now, I'm sure you've worked this out already, but Mylene is clearly, as we say in the medical <laughs> profession, up the duff. Yeah, it's true. You look yeah. gorgeous, by the way. Doesn't Mylene look absolutely <laughs> waving? <laughs> well, you always, you always look gorgeous, but you look gorgeous pregnant. That's, that's very kind. My fella says there's more to love. I think he's just being nice. How lovely. Are you enjoying being pregnant? I'm loving it. The first three and a half, four months were hell. Uh -huh. Never felt so ill. And you're not allowed to get any help from anyone because you're not allowed to tell anybody. You weren't allowed to tell anyone because, you, oh, of course, you want to make sure the Yeah, of course, you want to check everything's yeah, OK. Yeah. And I've never felt so bad. And I literally used to go green in interviews so and have hot flushes. So this is morning sickness and all that kind of thing? Absolutely. Okay. In fact, a policeman said, had a little word that I might have had a bit of a heavy night when I was being sick in the street. And had you had a heavy night? No, I was Oh, so you're not drinking during pregnancy? Of course no. not. I miss the old days when people used to smoke and drink during pregnancy. Were, it was more exciting. <laughs> um, how many um, months pregnant are you? And when is the baby I'm due? just over six months, so it's a September baby. So six months. So the baby, uh, and I don't wish to be indelicate here, but it must have been conceived... I'm not going to help you with the maths, but yes. But so, just, <laughs> so you weren't in the jungle, but you'd just come out of the jungle? Yeah. So is it Ant or Deck? Oh. <laughs> I'm assuming it was a Bush Tucker trial. <laughs> huh? Oh, it's not David Guess, is it? <laughs> Sweet baby Moses, no! <laughs> ah! <laughs> God bless him. He seems like a, a nice fella. He seemed like a, he's a character. Yeah, yeah. He's, before he was in that show, I think we all thought he was a kind of weird kind of mm. nut. And then he was in the show, and I think everyone grew to like him. Was he fun to be around? I don't think anyone knew what to expect from yeah. him or anybody that went in, to be totally honest. And then you literally go into a jungle and see each other strip bare. Hold and... it, what's going on there? I can't work out what's meant to be happening in that picture. What are you doing there to him? You seem to be shaving. What is that very rudimentary plastic surgery going on there in the jungle? <laughs> he's shaving his nose. What, the hair's on the top of his nose? Yeah. What, on here? Here. How hairy is he? He must be like a wolf boy. <laughs> so would he grow all over his face if he didn't shave? Did he have to shave all this bit as well? He did. They shaved here. Well, how many eyes? No, not here. Just... Well, what, well, you say not there, but what, there? How? Here. There? They get like... it there, don't they? Not a big bushy hair. <laughs> well, obviously Nick might. I don't know, but... Uh... That's wrong if it's up there. Oh, yeah. Andy, where do, you, where, do you, where do your hair start sprouting from? I haven't shaved yet. I've never shaved before. <laughs> about 24 years of growth right here. Yeah, but you, you wouldn't be shaking up there, would you, even if you were? Uh, probably not. I, I was a little freaked out by the, by the nose. <laughs> maybe, it's, uh, maybe it's where they've surgically pulled his scalp down. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that could be it. That could be Growing it. from his cheeks. But were you not a little bit... It's, it shows you in a tremendous light, I think, that you were prepared to shave the top of a man's nose and you'd only just met him. I don't think it's that big a deal. He had a hair there. It's, he's it's a nice guy. You asked it's, me it's like, Did you win any meals for the camp doing that? Is that <laughs> what I was about? <laughs> No. <laughs> uh, quite a brave thing to do to go in there, I would have thought, because you'd seen the, the earlier series, I'm sure, so you I knew what was... I wanted to go in there for years. Hold on, please put that back in my room. What are they doing showing that photo? <laughs> we'll, we'll do that, we'll have a look at that in a minute. You're naughty. <laughs> I'm naughty! <laughs> I, had, I honestly, honestly had All right, well, no let's deal, idea. Let's deal with the whole bikini situation, okay. as it's known. Uh, because, wow, you look great in a bikini. Congratulations on that. See, well, thank you. I, I think. <laughs> no, no, high five. Not a, that's it for the oh. bikini. Right. 
I, it's weird because when I was in there, the least thing you feel is, is very sexy or very sexy feminine. Or you just feel dirty and covered in bites and covered in iodine. And I just wanted to win the challenge. I wanted to get the food. But did you? Were you aware that they were uh, spending as much time filming you in the not showers? Not remotely. And, uh... Not remotely because they'd ask me what I, how I spent my day, and I would have built a table, carried water, lit the fire, maybe gone and tried to catch a yabby. But um, you seem to spend, and maybe it's the way they edited, but you seem to spend a lot more time in the shower than, for example, David Guest. <laughs> well. What they probably didn't show then is the fact that we used to queue up because, you know, it's like, it was like a student house. So they used you to didn't queue up. I bet they used to queue up when you were in the shower, <laughs> then they'd all go. <laughs> All right, uh, did you enjoy being in there? Because I loved uh, it. you actually had a good time as well. I loved it so much. I get easily excitable, so I don't know, every single day brought something new and I loved but it. But that came across, I think, people warm to people when they're having a good time. And, you know, you, you seem smiley in there, you seem to be, you know, enjoying. Well, I've never been camping every day. and I've never been allowed to jump out of anything because. But, but here's the thing where you're covered in there, you're covered in bugs now, I guess, something like that. Did yeah. you enjoy those moments of it? Well, no, that's not so nice because you've got cockroaches in your hair. But straight after I did that, they pulled maggots out of my ear. Uh -huh. And I did one in a coffin where I felt like a tea bag. They left me in the coffin and the water was rising, but it was boiling. And they had, oh, sorry, the water's hot in there. And they had rats <laughs> yeah. coming over you while you were in they there. They had didn't eels, you? but I didn't know what they were. And your, your mind starts, you know, playing games on you. So by the end of it, I decided that there was everything in there with me. Did you imagine at the time that possibly a sound man had reached in and was trying to have a. <laughs> Anything was possible. Honk, <laughs> honk, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Andy's looking horrified. Andy doesn't know what this show is. Do you know about this show? I haven't seen it before, but you look great in a bikini, Molly. Oh. i got to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> right, Molly, you know what? Uh, I, I, don't mean this in a, I don't mean at all this in a dismissive way, but what's interesting about you, I think, or one of the things is, in a way, you, you kind of epitomise the modern celebrity, because if we think about it, you came to everyone's attention via a reality show, OK? That was, uh, no, was it called Pop Stars, that one? Yeah, Pop Stars, Pop Stars. Yeah. Um, That's and, seven and years ago. In, well, so, I can't believe it's yeah. that long ago. Uh, and then, we'll talk about that period, but then when that kind of faded, that period of your life, and, and that was over, then you kind of came back into our consciousness and people learned to, you know, like you and appreciate you again via another reality show. So these two reality shows have been the kind of big high points in your career, in a way. I'm grateful for reality shows. I know everyone's jumping on the bandwagon saying that they're over or they bring out the the worst in people, but I think they hold a mirror up to a lot of people as well. And I wouldn't have got the opportunities that I've had if it wasn't for these shows. I was a session musician for years before um, pop stars, yeah. and I was literally I was doing the circuit, I was doing the round. I, I went through music college, I played in orchestras. So you were working, you were grafting, you were doing all those things. Yeah, but, yeah. Absolutely, I was touring up and down the country. I was singing with Katie Lang or Cliff Richard or whoever would have me. Yeah. But then when it came to singing my 16 bars, it was always like next. Yeah, so yeah. it took it took something like that to give me an opportunity to then go on to do other things. I'm really grateful for it. And I think you're right. You know, you say holds up a mirror to people. If people weren't small-minded or unpleasant or, or you know racist or whatever that we've seen on recent TV, then then that wouldn't come out just because of the reality show. That comes out because it's in their way. It opens up a dialogue, though. I think. Mm. I think it gets people talking. You're you're then open to maybe people you wouldn't necessarily meet every single day, so you're open to different cultures and, and just to, I mean look, I was in a band with five people that if we'd sat in a pub, we wouldn't necessarily have been on the same And you had three table. number ones, I think, and, uh, yeah, and some other hits. Yeah, we had a great thing. time, we had a really good time. Um, do you, are you in touch with him? Do you, are you, are you yeah. friendly with the guys still in, they yeah. were called, you were called Hearsay, weren't you? That's okay. right. Okay, there's Kim Marsh, she's in Coronation Street yeah. now, I believe, and there's... Uh, Susie. I'm the godmama to her baby. And she got involved with Darren Day, poor thing, and then we have, <laughs> what was this bloke's name? This is Noel. Noel, okay, yeah. And then we got, God bless him. No, 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 who did that? Who did that? That's wrong, no. Aww. No, he's, a nice, he's got a nice cheeky face, I yeah. think. Uh, but uh, but you're, still, you're still in touch with all of them, yeah? Yeah, I mean, we do bump into each other at bar mitzvahs and Christmas, but I speak to Susie all the but time. But you were thrown together anyway, so you're not going to be necessarily the best of friends. You, you no, get but on... you, you can't ignore an experience that we did go through. Huge experience. It, you know, we played arenas together, and at the same time we grew up in a house together where literally one day someone closed the doors and said, you're going to be a band, and the next day we walked out and there was this huge awareness as to what we were but, about. But that must have been a weird ride, because mm. uh, I know when you came out, suddenly you were playing big, big gigs with a big crowd, and people yeah. knew who you were. We were playing Wembley. I'd literally been a session musician trying to get arrested, trying to say, look, I can read music, and, and I was and working. And you play piano beautifully, don't you? you can I was play... playing piano. What grade studied. are you at? I did all my grades. So how's that? what's the highest grade? 
The highest grade is an eight. Right, grade eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when you see a bit of music, you just go da ba da ba boom, and you play it, and then <laughs> next, yeah. More or less, like wow, if you're lucky, how if you're lucky. There's, I mean, there's great pianists out there, but at the same time, it's hard for them to get the opportunity to get out there and play. Is anyone good enough? If like they would say, "You're so good, we're going to give you a grade ten just because you're the best." <laughs> you, can someone play music? So they're so good, they don't even have to open the music. I don't go by grades because I think Paul McCartney is an amazing musician, and he can't read music. There are so many strings to your bow. It's a, uh, you know, you're an interesting character that you, you play piano beautifully and, we've you. That, uh, and you, you, you're a DJ for Classic FM. That's right, in the morning. Uh, and the you weekend. have an album of classical music out. That's right. What's it called? It's called uh, Classical Music of Romance. Mylene's Music for Romance, yeah. Oh, there you go. Mylene's Music for <laughs> Romance. Okay, I listen to it. Much of it is beautiful. Some of it is Mylene's Music for Lifts, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> but a lot of it is great. Right? Now, can I say, huh? that's a good sign because half the time people think, oh, classical music can't go near it. It's yeah. too intimidating. Well, there's a lot of the stuff you have in there. I know it's kind of like it's what we call modern classics or it's the stuff that people like me who aren't necessarily very knowledgeable about classical music have learned to love via adverts. That's exactly Nothing who I intended it There's for. a lovely bit of Ennio Morricone at the beginning. Perfect. And then there's uh, the flower song from Lacme by Dalib. British Airways. And then there's something which I once was stuck in a lift with Spike Milligan, I believe, and he got Ooh. furious and tried to break the speaker out of the wall. Really? No, it's a, it's a, it's a lovely album. There's some lovely stuff on it, genuinely. Like, yeah, there's no, some I'm lovely vocals on it. You're not singing on it as well, no, or are I'm you? Not I'm playing the piano okay. on well, some Well, it's beautiful tracks. piano, with beautiful you. vocals, Thank beautiful you. strings and so on. Uh, here we have a clip of Marlene playing one of my favourite pieces of music. In fact, this is by the great, the maestro, Ennio Morricone. Very good. Maybe we can get you to come on and do a classical number for us one day. Let's do that. Um, didn't that sound beautiful? I think you're very nearly the perfect woman. You come home at night, she's wearing a bikini, playing classical music, and then a pint of breast milk in the fridge for afterwards. <laughs> I haven't got that far yet. Yeah, I haven't thought about that Will yet. you be sharing it with your beloved? When, uh... I said, well, he'll try anything once too, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's very sweet, breast milk. Is it really? Yeah, but you can still have it on cereal. My dad used to have it in his tea, he so used to have it in his apparently tea. it's all Lucky right. men, who did he get it from? Your mum or someone else? I should hope so. Yeah, or his mum. No. <laughs> um, OK, Mylene, here's one more thing before you go. I want to just ask you about uh, another love of your life. Uh, I don't know if anyone saw this show a while ago. I watched it. Uh, it was the 50th anniversary of The Sky at Night. Oh, yes. The great British television show, which has been, been you know, remarkably been running for 50 years on British television with the same host for most of that period. I think That's he took right. a few little bits off, but more or less consistently, the one man, Patrick Moore, Sir yes, Patrick Moore. legend. And I knew you on the show, and I thought, why is Miley in class on this show honouring Sir Patrick Moore, the astronomer? But it turns out you have a love of this subject. I and love you're... astronomy. I've had, like, a telescope since I was, like, five or six. I love it, yeah, absolutely. Now, do you like a telescope? Because the old-fashioned telescope, you looked at the end bit of that one. But the new ones, or the bigger ones, there's a, like a big barrel, and then you have a little bit there from the side you're looking, isn't there? It's true, but it's still, still the same thing. Because you were saying to me that you look at your, your stars through a computer now. No, right? no, I've got a telescope. I can't get the bloody thing to work, because it's like you're meant to link a computer and press a button, no. and it's meant to you know, find Saturn for you. You have a look, I can't find anything with it. I think, you know what, throw it out and start again. Start with binoculars. I know no. that, that doesn't appear How to you. condescending of you. <laughs> I can't see Uranus through binoculars. <laughs> it's worth a try. I bet it is, but never mind that. Hey? That's your bloody cocoa. <laughs> All right, Mylene Class, let me ask you, would you like to go up in space when Virgin and uh, other companies start doing their space tours? I would absolutely love to. I'm sure there'll be another reality show. But, <laughs> but wouldn't it scare the life out of you? Wouldn't you be terrified? Especially with well, the baby now. When you back. have your little baby, you don't want to go off to space because you've got this a This one's person. a little adventure already. We've done 14 countries. I've been counting wow. together already. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and are you ready for the birth in terms of have you done the breathing? Have you done the kind of all that nonsense? I haven't the... been to a single class because I've decided whatever other women do in other countries it just seems to kick in so I'm hoping my body will tell me I didn't even know I was pregnant and I was eating oranges so I obviously needed me, the folic I've had three it's easy really it didn't hurt you one bit did it no. Uh, no you know I'm sure do you have you been offered advice though do people tell you what to do in advance everybody has advice obviously because you know every second person's probably had a baby but I recently got told that um, during the labor I should moo which is a new one on me well like a cow moves apparently is that is that common knowledge ladies no, Who told that's you what I was it a farmer? <laughs> <laughs> no, apparently it soothes the baby and helps the mother. So if people are giving that kind of advice, it all gets very confusing. So Don't I've listen. decided no, mummy knows best. Marlin, how lovely to meet you. Thank you so much Thank for coming you, on the show. To meet you too. Good luck with the album, good luck with the bikinis, good luck with the uh, amateur astronomy, uh, good luck with the breast milk, good luck with everything. Thank you very okay? much. Thank you for coming on the show. Marlin class that in Denver. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What a lovely young lady.
Thank you, Marlene. <laughs> the lovely Marlene class. How lovely. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.